So in this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can set up Drozer and actually scan our application to get a better picture of the attack surfaces. This will help to reveal different attack surfaces that display in the manifest file, things like uh, content providers that are exported or activities that are exported, mostly like Android related vulnerabilities rather than vulnerabilities that we see in the actual implementation of the system or in the Java source code. Well, these would also be present in the Java source code. However, they're more like Android specific vulnerabilities. So this will allow us to pick up those vulnerabilities and be able to find a better picture of our attack surface. So to start off with, I'm on the Drozer website here, and you're going to want to download the version of Drozer respective to your operating system. In my case, I'm going to utilize the MSI file because I'm downloading this on Windows. Once this installer downloads, I'm going to go ahead and run it. And essentially, I'm just going to walk through the installer, right? I'm going to install it for everyone. Now, it's gonna ask me where I want to install this. It's very important that we install this in the directory of our Python 2 installation. This is specifically compatible with Python 2, not with Python 3 currently. So we wanna make sure it's installed specifically for Python 2. In order to do this, I'm gonna click on this arrow here. I'm gonna click on will be installed on local hard drive. And now I just need to give it the path of my Python 2 installation. So I'm just going to go through and find that path here. It's just on C Python 2.7 for me. So I'm going to copy this path and place it here. Once we do this, we press next and it's going to go ahead and install all of the components for Drozer. So once this is completed, there are going to be a few other components that we're going to have to install through pip in order to get this to work. I just want to demonstrate that this specifically installs into the Python 27 um, scripts directory. You can see here you have all the Drozer files associated with it. So that's where this is specifically installing. So um, since we have this scripts file on our path, we're going to be able to access Drozer through our command line. So now generally we're gonna make sure that we have a few different components available for us um, through pip. So those components are going to be, um, we're gonna do pip install protobuf. That'll be the first component that we wanna make sure that we have. I already have that installed. Um, we wanna make sure that we have um, pi open SSL installed. And in this case, I already have it as well. And we also wanna make sure that we have a twisted installed which I also already have. So we've, I've already got all those components. You just wanna run those install commands to make sure that you have those components as well. Otherwise, Drozer is gonna have trouble running. So to make sure that Drozer is actually available for us, you can just type in drozer.bat console connect. If you're on a Linux device, you're just gonna type in Drozer console connect. You don't need the .bat portion of it. Um, and you'll see it will start to work through. Um, it will attempt to actually work through it. And if you don't have a specific module, it will show you. So you can see here, I'm missing the module service identity. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install that through pip. So pip install um, service underscore identity. And then that will get installed and then we should be good to go here. So I'll try it one more time to see if it connects. Um, it should display, yeah, this exact error here. There was a problem connecting to the Drozer server. This shows us that everything is up and running. I just have to create the Drozer connection to my emulator. So let's go ahead and do that now. On my emulator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head onto Google Chrome and I'm gonna go onto the Drozer webpage from here. So I want this F secure page. We're gonna head on into here. And when we scroll down to the different builds that exist, you'll notice one that says Android a Android APK only. I'm gonna go ahead and download this file into my downloads. I'm gonna press on okay, and that will install the APK for us. Now it's gonna say typically for your security that we're not allowed to install unknown apps. All you have to do is click on settings and say allow from this source. Once you do that, you can go back. It will say, do you wanna install this application? We can say install. Once it's installed, we can press on open and you can see, you know, this app was built for an older version. That's okay. It will typically work on newer versions as well. So it's no big deal. In order to get Drozer up and running, you can press on on here and you'll see that it will start the embedded server on port 31415. To get this accessible, we have to type in the following command, adb forward t 
TCP colon 31415, TCB colon 31415. What this does is it forwards the ports for 31415 so that it's accessible by the Drozer agent um, as well as the Drozer component on our computer. So now when we run our Drozer.bat console connect, it will actually connect to our device. And now we're actually in the device. So let me demonstrate a few different things that we can do with this. The first thing that we can do is we can get general information about our actual package itself. So by doing this, we could say run app.package.info. App we put hyphen A, and then we put the name of the app that we want to look at. In our case, ours is com.android.insecurebankv2. When we do this, it will pull us general information about this application, which version it is, where the data is stored, where the APK path is. So again, um, from our previous video, when you were trying to pull the APKs, if you're trying to find that path, you can also find it through Drozer here. Um, it gives you the UID, some shared library information, and the different permissions that the application uses. So this is general good, like, overarching information about our app. Another thing that we can do is we can say run surface, and then we put in the name of the app, so com.android.insecurebankv2. When we do this, it shows me the potential things that I might be able to attack. So I can say that there are five activities that we export. We might be able to do something with those. Um, we have a broadcast receiver and we have a content provider. So these are all different things that are potentially exploitable. The app is also debuggable, which is an important component for us potentially later on. So this gives us a good overarching picture of the Android related vulnerabilities that could exist for this app. So that's generally just what I wanted to show you here on Drozer. I just wanted to get you with it up and running and give you a general overview of the information that we have on the app through it. Um, in future videos, we're going to take a look at more information that we can gather from this to be able to build up um, more information to be able to utilize, you know, vulnerabilities and exploits with it. Um, but for now, this is enough to just get us up and running.